going on, everybody? It is Wednesday, May 2nd. We've got an interesting split slate tonight. Uh, we're just going to talk about the main slate here. So we've got eight games going on. Uh, it's pretty balanced on my first pass, so price is going to be a very important factor for me tonight. Uh, Jake, what do you think about tonight's slate? I'm kind of disappointed that, that DK priced some of these pitchers down. Um like Paxton for 8K, yeah. Castillo 5300, uh, like Strasburg maybe a little bit underpriced, Bundy's probably a little bit underpriced, Godley's way underpriced. Um, so it, it's going to make for some increased ownership on the pitching, um, and then it's going to be a lot easier to fit in the top stacks. So going to try to get a little bit different as the day goes on, see where ownership falling, and um, hopefully make some money. Yeah, for sure. Um it's a weird, weird pricing night. Things are in spots that I wouldn't necessarily expect. So I'm anxious yeah. to see the lineups as they come out and see how it all balances out. I only had two stacks for the uh, the Spotlight Stacks article. Um, everybody else was just like mishmash together across sites. I couldn't get any consistency for a third one. So it's either going to be really good or really bad for me tonight. I, I can see a, an awesome night where it works out, or I can see like a really dreadful night. I'm not seeing the middle ground for some strange reason. So I hope it's the big one and not the small one. <laughs> yeah, you don't play DFS for the middle ground. You play for the big win yeah, or the big loss. Or the big loss. The big yeah. tilt. I mean, they both yeah. they both feel a certain kind of way. <laughs> yeah. All righty, let's dig into this. First game up on the slate, Nats and Pirates. Nats, 4.6 run implied total. Pirates, 3.2. It's a 65% chance to win for the Nats. Uh, Steven Strasburg going for Washington. Ivan Nova going for Pittsburgh. Uh, not looking at Nova at all. Uh, Strasburg's probably my favorite play on FanDuel. He's actually priced at 9700 which is kind of crazy to me. He's $500 cheaper than Severino. Uh, $800 cheaper than uh, DeGrom. Uh, I expect Strasburg to be the guy that I go to the most here. Uh, where are you looking uh, on DK? What's your Strasburg love level? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like him a lot. I don't know if I'm quite at love with Strasburg right now, but he's certainly a guy that could make the spotlight pitchers article. Um, definitely a good spend-up option. We saw uh, Scherzer do pretty well against Pittsburgh last night. I think he had like 27 DK points. Um, Strasburg's been really awesome against righties this year specifically. There are quite a few lefties at the top of the order for the Pirates. We talk about it all the time, but um, for 10-8, I think Strasburg makes for a pretty solid play. I don't know that he's my favorite point-per-dollar pitcher, but I think he pitches well and um, probably puts up a bunch of DK points. Yeah, I just... Like, it's just so much easier on FanDuel with that price point. I, I thought that I was going to really like Severino tonight before I looked into anything, just sort of glancing at the games. Um, and then I saw the pricing and saw Strasburg $500 under that. I was like, well, I know who my number one guy is going to be. It's just so hard to ignore that, like, 65% chance to win. Plus, I don't care too much about the lefty bats on the Pirates. I don't find Adam Frazier to be so scary. Um, like I, I never, I don't know. I never really care too much about like Polanco or Dickerson or Josh Bell. I don't know why. I, I guess I should. <laughs> They're probably better than I'm giving them credit for. 23rd in baseball uh, in hard contact against lefties. I don't know why I'm looking up against lefties. I don't know why I clicked that. I meant to click versus righties. So Th those are some stats for. Uh, whether or not they face a lefty in the bullpen tonight. <laughs> I just looked at yeah. them and was like, what am I looking at? Where are the Pirates hiding? 19th in baseball in hard contact versus righties. I just, uh, when in doubt for me, I like to bet on Strasburg. I've got like a, a weird thing with him where I just assume that he's going to be amazing from the jump. I can still picture him like being in college and following him coming up. So, I don't know. I've got this, like, soft spot in my head for him. I'm going to end up with a lot of Strasburg. Probably too much. Hopefully, that's a good thing. <laughs> no, I mean, he's right up there with one of the top pitchers on the slate for me, I think. Especially in terms of raw points. 
Um, there's probably a couple guys I like better than him point per dollar, but I don't know that you're going to need a ton of value on DK at least. So Strasburg, you might just need the raw points, and he could get you 25 here, I think, yeah. pretty easily. Um, I, I assume we're on the same page that there's no way we're touching Nova. No, no, absolutely not. Just making sure. Uh, Nats bats. Uh, I like the Nats as one of my favorite stacks today. They're one of two teams that actually showed up uh, in bulk when I ran my crunches. So Trey Turner was a guy who popped up a ton. 4300 on FanDuel, 4400 on DK. Just love the price for that implied total, this particular matchup. Uh, Harper looks like an incredible spot today. I, I'm never really worried about Nova. He's pretty hittable. Um, Matt Adams had a monster game yesterday, uh, so this will seem like more of a chase, but I just like Adams in lefty-righty matchups. So um, I'm going to have a lot of a Nats stack. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I, I like the Nats too. Uh, how can you not if, after last night? Not that that means everything, but yeah. Matt Adams over the last two weeks against right-handed pitching is seventh in average exit velocity, uh, averaging almost 98 miles per hour against righties. So... He's going to get another one here. He's going to make contact with Nova, I would think. Uh, Nova has like, yeah, he's got like an 11% K rate against lefties. Um, So Adams for sure up there. Bryce Harper, like we don't really need to talk about him. He's probably underpriced on DK at 5,100. Is he going to lead off again? Who? Is that Harper? I have Turner in the leadoff spot right now. Okay. I'm seeing Harper in in the leadoff spot. Er, Let me take a look at it. Where you hiding nets? Oh yes, so so am I. Okay. We could update that on the fly. Yeah, I mean it doesn't change much for me for me for him. Um, it just probably helps Adams now that he's in the three spot. Uh, and then I like these righties too. Zimmerman, Kendrick, Trey Turner's been hitting a lot better. So Nets stack is for sure in play. Probably one of the better plays on this late slate actually, with. Not a ton of stacks that I love, so I like the Nats for sure. I wish that I didn't reference Trey Turner hitting leadoff in a mini joke in my Spotlight Hitters article now that I see that he's slotted into the two-hole again for the second (laughs) night in a row. Um, All right, so Turner at two, Harper to one, Zimmerman hitting third. Nope, Zimmerman hitting fourth. Matt Adams hitting – well, they're just scrambling this – all up. Kendrick fifth? Mm-hmm. Okay, there yep. we go. Now we got it. Much better. Uh, yeah, I, I like that even more for the top four now. Um, so Harper, Turner, Adam, Zimmerman is going to be a core four for me in a big, big way. Howie Kendrick will get there um, from time to time as a second baseman option. But I'm going to end up with a lot of Harper and Adams and and Turner as well. Turner's price is just really nice, particularly on DK. I really like that for a shortstop price. Yeah, and he's, I got to give him credit. Like, he was hitting pretty poorly over the last couple weeks. He's hitting right-handed, right-handed pitching pretty well. Um, he's in the top 45 in the MLB against right-handed pitching for average exit velocity. So I like to see that from Turner. Um, we know what happens when he can get on base. He's just a threat to steal pretty much every time. Um, I'm going to check quick how Nova is in general at holding runners. He's below average, it looks like, holding runners. So like good matchup Turner. for Turner. Yeah. Like Harper can steal too. Like if Harper gets on, they could theoretically double steal. Like not saying that that's likely or anything, but. Just because Turner's not batting leadoff doesn't mean that he's not going to be not going to have chances to steal. Agreed. Uh, Pirates bats, not really for me. Three point two run implied total is lowest on the entire slate. I'm not looking to stack against Strasburg, at least not with neither the Pirates am. bats. Yeah, neither am I. Cool. Move on. Marlins and Phillies. Uh, Marlins, 3.5 run implied total. Phillies, 4.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, Jose Urena going for Miami. Aaron Nola going for Philadelphia. 
Uh, we're getting them out of the way early. Uh, if Strasburg's not my favorite pitcher on the slate, Aaron Nola is um, 8,900 on FanDuel, 9,900 on DK. So he's the sixth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. He's third on DK. I love Nola on FanDuel. I, I can't get enough of him. I expect basically all of my ownership to go to DeGrom, Strasburg, Nola, and Paxton. And then uh, Strasburg and Nola, I think, are going to be leading the charge and be my two biggest guys. 3.5 run implied total for the Marlins. Just not very scary. Nola with big-time swing and miss stuff. Um, I just want a lot of Nola. What about you? I, I mean, I like Nola in the spot. Um, th- I am a little bit concerned he's not getting the... Uh, he's not getting the, like the whiffs and the swinging strikes that we we saw last year. So, I mean, he still looks good. Like nine nine hundred on DK. He's the pricing is way different on DK and Fanduel now that I'm going through all these pictures and, and seeing your sheets. Yeah. Um. So, like, I like him a lot on Fanduel. On DK, I, I don't think I'm in love with him for ninety nine hundred. I think I'd rather go up to Strasburg. Or Degrom as of now, but like if you want to play Nola, he could. If is he going to crack the code against the Marlins? Like, uh, he could certainly do it. There looks like there's going to be a bunch of righties in the lineup, and he's been really good against righties. He's had trouble striking out lefties, but um, yeah, I, I like Nola. He's just not my favorite on DK. Marlins twenty sixth in the league hard contact against righties. You know, Nola, not a guy that's easy to square up. Um, and I just, like, <clears throat> from a price perspective on FanDuel, it's hard to avoid him and Paxton just, you know, basically, like, just over the mid-tier in pricing in situations where, you know, Nola's a 60% favorite. He's checking off all the boxes I need. If the only thing you have to worry about in the Marlins lineup is, like, Justin Bauer, uh, I'm going to be fine. Yeah, like, they're... I'm not looking to play any Marlins hitters against Aaron Nola. No. Um, so I think he's a fine play. Like, no problems with him. I think there are a couple guys on DK that I like below him, though. <laughs> with liking a Nat stack and liking Strasburg and uh, Nola as much as I do, my other stack that I, you know, that I'm really on is the Reds. I'm gonna know immediately, like how well it, by eight o'clock. I'll know exactly how my night's going to shake out because I'll have most All the, of my yeah. main pitching and two of my main stacks going already. So it's going to be a. I'll, I'll have my opinion set on the night by eight o'clock p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Uh, Philly stack. I like it more today than I did in the past few days. Um, I think they're really balanced one to five on DK, and then Altair and Santana. If they're at four or five, I think grayed out really nicely. Yeah, so I talked about Althair, Santana, and Reese Hoskins for fifty two hundred. Then Odubel Herrera is jammed in between them. There is some wind blowing in. I don't know if Miami is going to close the roof for this game, so that might make a little bit of a difference or sort of a tiebreaker thing because. It's 81 degrees, wind blowing in, so I don't know what exactly that does for hitters. Um, you like 81 degrees, but you don't like wind blowing in. Sure. Um, so I like Santana, Althair, Reese Hoskins. Um, yeah, I do like a little bit of a Philly stack. Urena's getting hit hard by lefties and righties, and I'm not looking to play him, that's for sure. I'm just going to look at the Marlins bullpen quick. and um, So... I don't think the Marlins have a great bullpen, do they? Uh, I, I have it here. They're 10th Marlin- in whip, yeah. Where are they at? They must be in the middle of the pack. I can't even find them. Yeah, they're 10th in whip right here. 1.45 uh, s- whip. 17th in XFIP. Yeah. But, right, so, hold on, whatever. that's sort of the opposite direction. So, whatever the opposite of that is. 14th 13th, in XFIP. 13, 14th, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, no problem with any of the Phillies bats. No. Like, there, are, I think there are limited hitting options tonight. At least for me, I'm having trouble coming up with some of them. Um, maybe outside of the Milwaukee game, but 
yeah, the Phillies bats could for sure end up in my lineup. Like, I don't love Urena as a pitcher. He's the numbers show he's just getting hit hard, and uh, the Phillies have some guys that can hit the ball really hard. Yeah, uh, Althair and uh, Santana are going to be my two main guys from from Philly on FanDuel, and then Hoskins is probably third. But I'll definitely have a little bit of Philly stacks. Um, there's just so much balance out there. Nobody's standing out for me. It's kind of crazy. I'm anxious to see how the lineups shake out uh, as they start trickling in. Because yeah. little bits here or there could really move this around. If we get like a power guy in, uh, in like a righty-lefty matchup. Somebody can come out yeah. of nowhere and be a really nice play tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> we good here? Yeah, we're good. All righty. Mets and Braves. Uh, Mets, 4.1 implied total. Braves, 3.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Mets. Jake DeGrom going for New York. Sean Newcomb, who was supposed to throw yesterday, uh, is now throwing today. Uh, he's going for Atlanta. I like DeGrom a lot. I just prefer Strasburg's slightly lower price. Um, Newcomb, not a guy that I'm really looking at, although I'll be cheering for him on a personal level. Uh, do you prefer DeGrom or Strasburg? Oh, that's tough. Um, I'd, probably, I'd probably lean towards DeGrom right now. Okay. Uh, like, But you can tell like I, I don't have a super strong take at this point. I'll, I'll know more by the time I write the spotlight pictures after this. Um, once I do a little bit more digging, but like I targeted with, I targeted the Braves yesterday with Syndergaard. So Degrom doesn't have the same issues holding guys on base. That wasn't really the problem with Syndergaard, but uh, just a little bit of a bump there, I think, for him. Eleven five, I can afford him for sure tonight. Um, I mean, with Acuna in the lineup, it does make it a little bit more scary. Really, those top three bats for the Braves. But once you get past that, like you get Dansby Swanson, Suzuki is a little bit better. Uh, he's greatly improved as a hitter, but not super scared against him with a righty. Uh, Flaherty and Enciarte batting ninth. Is that that seems a little weird? Yeah, I'm rotating that around now. I didn't have that in here like this. I don't. Uh, I don't know why you put him ninth, but neither do I. Um, <laughs> I don't like seems, it. Yeah, I don't like that either, but. Um, yeah, I like DeGrom quite a bit. Just such good strikeout stuff. Um, he's 11th in wisp per swing this year. So just another really good season for DeGrom, it looks like. And uh, yeah, I like him a ton here. Yeah, I'll have some of him. I'm guessing that I'll be like, I don't know. DeGrom, Strasburg will have like one and a half times the exposure for me than DeGrom is my guess. So it'll be okay. like, I don't know, DeGrom 20%, Strasburg 30% or something like that. That's fair. And I am i don't even know if I'm going to end up on either one of them because uh, I do like a bunch of these pitchers below them or at least three of them that we have yet to talk about. So Yeah, agreed. That 3.3 run implied total for the Braves is what is really putting me off. Second lowest of the main slate. Uh, it's just kind of gross. They've not been great against, you know, good righties. Uh, they're 24th in the league in uh, hard contact percentage against righties, which is kind of scary. Um, and, you know, we've seen, we've talked about it before when they were just getting rolled on by the Nats like two weeks ago. So, yeah. DeGrom fits that bill of Strasburg and Scherzer, guys that can really make you look bad over the course of a game. So yep. I'm not looking at any Braves. I'm not looking at Newcomb. Uh, I think the Mets stack looks pretty good on DK. Uh, Wilmer Flores, uh, is, you know, we talked about him yesterday in the show, but once Newcomb got bumped, so did he. Uh, I really like Flores tonight as a, as a one-off play or as part of a stack on DK. 2200 on FanDuel is just too low of a price for a guy that mashes lefties. Yeah, so I think it's it's pretty easy with the Mets stack. You you go one through four if you can. So Estrella Cabrera, Flores, Cespedes, Todd Frazier, that's a pretty tough one through four for any lefty. Agreed. Um, Newcomb has done a really good job at striking out lefties, making them, or striking out righties, making them miss. Um, but we saw last year a bunch of times where he can just lose it. If he loses his command, he's going to walk guys and 
uh, then you're hitting with guys on base, and then it becomes a little bit different. You got a chance to drive in runs, and um, Newcomb is not uh, immune to blow up starts, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. So I like those top four for the Mets for sure. Yeah, um, Newcomb with the the five walks per nine projected from Steamer, that's an aggressively high number. Um, yep. So when it goes, it can really go bad for him. Gets gets that pitch count up really high with all those. You know potential walks or potential K's. I mean, it's just it's all happening at the plate for him. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I'm not liking this one for the Braves. <laughs> no, I I don't. I don't really like anyone on the Braves, newcomb included. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't take anyone. Like literally anyone. I mean, you can always talk me into like Freddie Freeman. Sure. But that's more like if Degrom's going to be fifty, sixty percent, and I don't think he's going to be. Then you then if you're fading to Grom, you take a bat against him, and you take probably the best bat against him. Agreed. But if he's going to be like 30, 40, then I don't think you have to do it. You don't have to take a, a leverage bat against him. Nah, I hear you. Yeah, uh, there's just not a ton to like here. It's the top four for the Mets and Degrom. Yep. Alrighty, Reds and Brewers. Reds 4.7 run implied total. Brewers 4.3. It's a 54% chance to win for the Reds. Uh, Luis Castillo going for Cincinnati. Wade Miley going for Milwaukee. Um, God, these guys are priced down so far. Uh, Wade Miley, 5,500 on FanDuel. Kind of hilarious. But Luis Castillo, good stuff. Uh, Really cheap price. I would like him as a second starter on DK. I don't see any reason to go that low on... FanDuel outside of maybe like two or three lineups in a if you're running at 150 or something, uh, but Castillo should be a little bit more popular on DK. Guy I like a little bit. Only concern is really that Brewers 4.3 run implied total. Um, if Thames were healthy, that would be a little scarier. But if it's just Yelich and Shaw, I think that Castillo has the stuff to be able to navigate that. Yeah, like. Okay, so if Castillo was like 7K in this spot, which I don't know why he's not, just he's got so much strikeout upside from game to game. Brewers do have guys that'll strike out, especially against righties, so you're not as scared of Braun or Domingo Santana or Arcia or Bandy against a righty. You get the pitcher spot in there. So if Luis Castillo has his stuff, like, and he, he's somewhat got his command, which is a tall order for him these days then he could easily score 20, 25 points here. He's just a guy that he can ra- rack up eight, seven, seven, eight, like maybe 10 strikeouts if he's on. He's just, he just hasn't had it for really, besides one start. Um, so if you're making a ton of lineups, I would for sure get some exposure to $5,300 Luis Castillo. For me, with one lineup, um, it's going to be tough for me to try to decide if I want to take that risk, knowing that a lot of people are also going to be stacking up the Brewers, and if he blows up, my night's over right away. Yeah. Um, like, And you'll probably know pretty soon into the game, within an inning or two, whether or not Castillo is going to have a good start or whether or not it's going to go south pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I wish that I could get to him a little bit easier on uh on FanDuel, but I, I'm just not gonna see the need to like pay down for him. It's too far down on a night where there's still like decent pitching options at the top, even in a short like, you know, eight games is not that many when we were playing with fourteen over the past two days. Um to get down to sixty seven hundred for Castillo, I might not even be able to fill out the rest of the salary in bats. Yeah. Um that's also the thing too. Like, you you may just not need him on DK or yeah. or Fanduel. Um, maybe more on DK because you can pay up for Degrom or Strasburg or Nola, and then just put in Castillo and get in basically every bat you want. Yeah. But like the that'll problem probably be is the Astros and Yankees are playing each other in a decent matchup, so the the run totals are low. They're usually you know one of the more expensive groups of hitters that you can get so yep. they're not in a great spot to be stacking hitting which makes it a little bit harder to get to castillo for me i think the matchup's great uh, i don't have a problem using him like i said he's a guy that should be in play on dk he's not so much in play on fanduel yeah and then like 
if you're not playing Castillo and it starts to get around, like you're looking at other stuff and he's going to be popular, which I mean, he should be relatively popular here. Yeah. Um, like a Brewers leverage stack seems really nice. Any, any stack against Castillo um, these days seems like it's going to be fine because like we're saying, when he loses it, he loses it pretty bad and it's with the long ball and it's with um, hard hit balls. So um, no issue going either way. Like he's just a guy that I can't really figure out right now. So Yelich and Shaw for sure for me. And then an entire Brewers stack isn't even out of the question. Yeah, I like the stacks on both sides, actually. Uh, wrote the Reds up. I felt like I've been talking about the Brewers as a stack every day for like the past week. I actually like the Reds a lot here. 4.7 run implied total is first right now. Um, they've rotated the order a little bit from what I had in, in my night data. I fixed it here. Um, so if Billy Hamilton's set to lead off, uh, he's a guy that I definitely want a part of. Um, He's just one of those. Has he picked up his stolen bases yet? We haven't talked about that since we, since you pointed out that he uh, hadn't been swiping as many bags. Let's see. I'm going to beat you to it. Got five. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I mean, maybe he's just not getting on base. Hitting 187 with a 288 on yeah. base percentage probably isn't helping. Yeah, I see a lot of Ks in there in his game log, so... 33 in uh, 91 <clears throat> at bats. It's so not great. Pretty shitty. <laughs> not great. But no. Wade Miley's on the hill, so. Yeah. Um, either way, I like a red stack. Uh, I wrote up Adam Duvall. Uh, just absolutely mashes left handed pitching. Can't really hit righties to save his life, but when he's 2,800 on FanDuel um, against a lefty with this implied total, I'm in. Should have Votto on in front of him, you know, I don't know, at least twice. <laughs> so, yeah, opportunities will be abound for Duvall. If he goes yard, I would expect it to include uh, some guys on, which is all you're really looking for. Yeah, I love Duvall and Suarez. Suarez, thirty-five or uh, 4,500 at third base on DK. But, um, yeah, give me some of that. And then Votto, you can even make a case for power hitter Jose Peraza. For 3700 uh, If you want to play Billy Hamilton for 3500 uh, you can be my guest. But, I mean, Wade Miley's good at preventing steals. I think Mesoraco looks really nice at 2900 for a catcher play on DK. Yeah, sure. Catcher under 3K with the platoon advantage, like, that's fine with me, especially if you're stacking up the Reds, which seems like a pretty awesome play. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why... I like it as much as I do. Because a lot of these guys aren't very good. <laughs> or, like, not very good in, like, a DFS sense. Like, I like Peraza a lot. You know, former yeah. Brave. But he's not, like, the best hitter in the world. No, he's not. I like and I was, all, but yeah. projected for a sub-300 on base percentage. Like, you're, you're betting on a very specific outcome. I'm going to be doing it with uh, probably more than I should, but... <laughs> I don't really like no. the Reds. Yeah, we've seen it where bad hitters have good games, and it's just the pitcher blowing up a lot of the times. The pitcher can't miss, uh, hit his spots, and even below average hitters can take advantage. So I'm not worried about a red stack here. I'm not worried about Wade Miley missing bats. No. Uh, so that's the most important thing for me. So Duval, Suarez, Mezzarocco, and really Vado, and then was kind of kidding about Jose Peraza. <laughs> he he double donned last week and it it uh got me out of the cash so I'm I'm a little angry with Jose Peraza right now. Cincinnati sixth in the league in uh, hard contact versus lefties something to keep in mind there. Nice. So, I like the Reds. I like a Brewer stack. Um, they're just not grading out as crazily high as they have mm -hmm. been for the past couple days. But I'm in for anything that starts with Yelich and Shaw. You can give me Kane, Braun, Domingo Santana. I'm, I'm, all, I'm fine with all that. VR for a second baseman at his price is, is cool with me too. I'll have half as much Brewers as I do Reds, but I'm fine with either side of this game. Yeah. I like both sides. And again, third straight day where you could see this game going off and just game stacking it and hope there's hope you get into the bullpens pretty early and um, 
there could be a ton of runs in it at the Great American Small Park. <laughs> Good one there. Oh, yeah. I got the jokes. Astros and Yankees. Astros 3.8 run implied total. Yankees 3.9. 51% chance to win for the Yanks. Uh, Dallas Keuchel going for Houston. Luis Severino going for New York. Um, I just like DeGrom and Strasburg miles more than Severino. I don't really like using Severino against Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Reddick, Bregman. Like they're just the Astros are too powerful for me there to like lean Severino. I assume his ownership will be relatively low. Um, and then Keuchel's not a guy that I'm looking at at all. I I don't really like anything in this game. Yeah, that's where I was at, and I'm I'm sort of still there. Like I just kind of want to avoid mostly everyone in this game. I think you can make a case for. Um, like a Yankees little mini stack here. Stanton Even though Keuch- good. Yeah, so Stanton, some combination of the three big guys. So Stanton, Judge, and uh, Sanchez. And just mini stack, but uh, I don't want to like full on stack against Keuchel. Um, and then Severino, just one of the toughest matchups in all of the MLB against the Astros, even though they haven't been as great as they were last year. But, um, like, I'd rather not go up against Springer, Altuve, Correa, Guriel, Reddick, uh, Marwin Gonzalez. Like, all these guys are just tough hitters. They're so, so deep. And even a, a really good K guy like Severino is going to have trouble, I think, here. So $9,200, like, it's a good price for Severino, but pretty terrible matchup from what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't get there. I'm anxious to see what his ownership percentage is. Um, I hope it's high. Uh, I expect it to be like comically low for where he is. Um, Yankees 23rd in baseball in hard contact versus lefties. So that makes me a little bit happier. I was hoping that nothing would just point me in the direction of wanting to go to these teams. I'll barely have any of this game. Um, Stanton will pop up for me as a one-off outfielder a little bit. But other than that... I, I won't have the pitchers, and uh, let's see, how, how much Severino did I have on FanDuel when I ran this? 10 out of 150 lines, so 7%. That's about where I would expect I, it to be. Yeah, like, I don't mind getting exposure to Severino. He's, I think he's in that class where he can just go and mow down pretty much any lineup. Agreed. So I wouldn't be shocked if he goes deep into this game, strikes out a bunch of guys. I just don't think it's very likely here, so I don't think I'll have him. I'm, I'm completely with you. I just, just, it's a really good game. It could be like an ALCS preview or something, but yeah, uh, I'm good here. There's just no, there's no real value for the dollar. And both teams with the sub four run implied total, it's the only game of the night that has both teams under four runs. It's just, it's not made for DFS. I don't think so either. Um, like if this is a four or five game slate, I'd probably have to look at it a little bit harder. But we've got eight games to choose from. We've talked about some other bats we like, um, so I wouldn't go crazy with this game. Yeah, there's just too many other options. Mm-hmm. Uh, Diamondbacks and Dodgers. D backs four point one run implied total. Dodgers three point seven. It's a fifty four percent chance to win uh, for the Diamondbacks. Jake's boy, Zach Godley, going for Arizona. Hunjin Ryu going for the Dodgers. Um, I definitely don't want Ryu on DK, where he's the fifth most expensive pitcher. He's 10th on FanDuel. Just amazing gaps in pricing. Uh, Godley, not a guy that I want on FanDuel. He's $900 more expensive than Ryu on, on FanDuel. He's... Thirteen hundred dollars cheaper on DK. If I'm going to take Godley, he'll be my he'd be a second starter for me on DraftKings. Um, but I don't really love either guy all that much. Yeah, I I like Godley a ton on DK. Yeah, I get that. Like I I don't know how he's not going to end up on my lineup. He's going to be chalk probably for seventy six hundred. People know this guy is legit and he can strike out a bunch of guys. He's never really a guy I'm expecting to go seven innings and give up no runs and just be super efficient. But uh, for 7,600, that's like a 
perfect price, like way too low. Um, he's even been better against lefties, it looks like. Um, so I don't know if that's going to keep up, but it sort of makes sense with his changeup, and um, he's got that nasty curveball. He's giving up 20% hard contact against lefties so far this year, uh, 25% strikeout rate. He's 17th in whiffs, like just everything, all the stats that I'm looking at uh, from day to day, he always checks out on those. So he's almost always a guy I'm going to be on if his price is right. And it it's more than right in this matchup. Yeah, he looks he looks pretty good as a second starter on DK. Um, as the fifth starter, or the fifth most expensive guy on FanDuel. More expensive than Nola, more expensive than Paxton. I just can't go that direction. Um, but I would... I would look at situations where he would be my second starter on DK. He just he, he's got too good of stuff for that price point. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like that's it's the Luis Castillo thing. I don't think he's as volatile as Luis Castillo because because yeah. no one is. But um, like it's not the the most perfect matchup against the Dodgers. It is better now that there's no Corey Seager to worry about. Um, if Kike Hernandez is in the lineup, that's a boost to Godley. He's not the same player against righties. As he is against lefties, um, <clears throat> just seems like a really good matchup for Godley, and I'll eat the chalk if he's chalk because that's how much respect I have for him as a pitcher. I think it's a pretty decent strikeout matchup as well. I would completely agree there. Uh, from a bats perspective, I love Goldschmidt tonight. Yes, uh, he's just he's priced perfectly to just absolutely roster the hell out of. Um, can't get enough of him on either side. The only problem is just sort of the rest of the team doesn't look all that great. So I don't get there as much from a stack perspective as I do uh, just from the one-off perspective. Um, Arizona versus lefties, fifth in the league in hard contact. Uh, so maybe I should be taking a, a little bit closer of a look at the Diamondbacks. Did you like anything other than Goldschmidt? I mean, Pollock, I guess. But Yeah, I like uh, Goldschmidt and Pollock, so... Pollock has been hitting a ton better. Um, started off pretty slow at the start of the year, but uh, three home run game last week, um, just hitting the ball much, much harder. So those are guys I want to target. And um, like I, I do have respect for what Ryu's done. I wasn't a believer in him coming into the season, uh, even in his first few starts, but like he's done a good job at missing bats, so I don't want to fully stack against him. But Goldschmidt, Pollock, um, and then Nick Ahmed, he hits lefties pretty hard actually. Going back to last year, so Nick Ahmed for thirty three hundred on DK, um, yeah, give me some of that as well. Yeah, so he's not two hundred dollars to... more expensive on Fanduel, so he's not really grading out all that well. But he looks no. really nice on Fan or on DraftKings. Yeah, so that's sort of where I'm at. Two, three, four with. The Diamondbacks, um, mostly just Goldschmidt and Pollock, but Nick Ahmed for some salary relief. Okay. Um, Pollock has 10 home runs already. He had 14 all of last year. Yeah. and they, they, Slugging they've 6 come the last, Yeah. It looks like seven of them have come in the last two weeks. So he didn't start off great, but now he's hitting the ball extremely hard. He's sixth in baseball in weighted runs created plus. Just That's, mashing. Just mashing. Yeah. Yeah. More expensive than Goldschmidt. If that, if you're curious, that's kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have. I can get to some Goldschmidt. That's probably it. I don't have a ton of interest in the Dodger side of this. Uh, I'd be surprised if I had much of anything in this game. Outside of Goldschmidt, yeah, pricing is um, just not there for me on Fanduel. That's fair. I think Goldschmidt and Pollock, just the two guys that I'm looking at very closely, and then just like I mentioned before, Nick Ahmed. Um, any? Do you say you like any Dodgers? I mean, like Utley as a one-off has a good price, but I would never get to him for any particular reason. So I can't imagine having any Dodgers. Um, Chris Taylor, I think, leading off, makes some sense against Godley. Okay. 
But if I'm ending up on Godley, then I'm not going to end up with any Dodgers bats, of course. Sure. Yeah, this is not the game for me. Yeah. Angels and Orioles. Angels 4.4 run implied total. Orioles 3.6. It's a 58% chance to win for the Angels. Andrew Heaney uh, going for the Angels. Dylan Bundy going for Baltimore. Uh, no way am I touching Bundy. Uh, fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. Just not happening. Uh, I like Heaney a lot here. Um, am I crazy? No, I, I don't think you're crazy. He's been impressive. Um, he's over 11.8% swinging strike rate in all three of his starts this year. He's top 30 in whisper swing. Um, he just looks pretty good. Uh, I'd like to see him throw more pitches per start, but that's really the only bad thing I can say. And then we've been targeting against Baltimore for weeks, it seems like. Yeah. They just don't... Yeah, there's a bunch of right-handed bats, but it's a big park. And um, outside of, like, Machado... Are they getting back Mark Trumbo? He played last night, didn't he? He did? I didn't I see that. I remember him being originally in my lineup. Okay. Well, if he's in, that's a little bit of a downgrade. He can hit lefties, but... Um, Outside of that, like it's really Machado that I'm scared of. So he need for six K. Like I'll take a shot there. Yeah. If he's gonna be significantly lower owned than Luis Castillo, he makes for a nice pivot on DK too. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say Heaney would probably be my pick as my second DK starter if I were building this out like myself. I think that I would end up on probably Heaney. So it would mm-hmm. either be I would probably be like Strasburg and Paxton, and if that didn't work, I would drop from Paxton to Heaney. Yeah, I get it. Um, I for sure like Heaney. Uh, and you said you don't like Bundy? No, not at all. Fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel is impossible for me. And then I can't imagine taking Bundy if I could spend $200 more and take Paxton on DK. Yeah, that's that's sort of where I'm at, too. Uh, I respect Bundy. Like, I don't think he's going to get blown up again. Uh, I, I could see him actually pitching pretty well here. Tons of righties in the Angels lineup. Looks like all but two is that what you have as well. Otani and Cole Calhoun. Yeah. And then everyone else is a righty. So there are good righties. It's Kinsler, Trout, Upton. Uh, even Kozart doesn't strike out that much. But Bundy has a near 40% strikeout rate against right-handed bats this year. Um, he looks really good outside of that last start. So I'm just going to give him a pass there and assume everything's fine with his velocity and stuff. I'll, I'll double-check that, but um, it just sort of makes me not want to target the Angels against Bundy. Yeah, I don't really like any of the bats here. Um, basically, the only thing that I would be looking at is Heaney as a, like a discounted pitcher. Other than that, maybe a little... I, no, 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 I don't really like anything from a bat's perspective in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of writing off bats in this one as well. Okay. All right, last game up for the main slate. Mariners and A's, not Marines. That's not at all how you spell Mariners. Uh, 4.6 run implied total for the Mariners. 3.4 for the A's. It's a 63% chance to win for the Mariners. James Paxton going for Seattle. Brett Anderson on the hill for Oakland. Uh, I love Paxton here. Um, on FanDuel, him and Nola only separated by 100 bucks. I have a hard time separating the two. I'm just going to want a decent amount of them. I hope that I'm over the field on both. And then Paxton on DK, just his price point and sort of the location of everybody else makes me really, really like him. He would be my, f- He'd be the first guy that I would want in all of my lineups on DK from a pitching perspective. I don't know if I would want to go down from him as well and grab a second cheaper guy or most likely have DeGrom or Strasburg. But I just, I really like Paxton tonight. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to like Paxton just for 8k on DK. It's just a, it's just a really stupid price for him. Like he should not be priced at 8k. Like, I mean, okay. If it's against the Astros on the road, like, yeah, give him an AK price tag, but he is at home against the A's. I, I do have some respect for the A's. I don't think it's like a, a slam dunk matchup. They're, they have a 21.8% K rate, which is below average. 
and then they're second in hard contact against lefties when I checked last night. Yeah, that, I have it up here. <clears throat> I was just about to say that, which is so, the only thing that I'm a little nervous about. But, like, Paxton is a guy that he just strikes out guys. He creates a ton of soft contact, and I don't know. I mean, it should – like, I don't know. Paxton should pitch well here. If, if he's going to be super, super chalky, and I guess my pivot to him would be godly, but I bet they both get a bunch of ownership. So I prefer Godly over him, but um, okay. if he's going to be super chalky and I don't end up on him, I'd maybe go with the Jed Lowry or a Matt Chapman and just try to get a, a two-run home run off of him just to, to leverage the field that way. But if you don't want to target any bats against Paxton, I certainly understand it. The K rate is insane, 33.3% against righties. Um, like, he's... He's just awesome, and this is just way too cheap for him, even in, I don't think, a, a great matchup. What's Oakland's K rate versus lefties? 21.8. Okay. It's what, it, that's what it was last night. Yeah, 20th in baseball. It's so weird. Uh, seeing how much hard contact the A's are making against lefties gives me pause, but then seeing that 3.4 run implied total, it's just like, okay, well... You know, apparently they think that's going to regress a bit because the Mariners are monster favorites here. Yeah. Um, that's really the, the reason he's driving forward so, for, so far for me on FanDuel, just that increased chance of getting a win plus having, you know, electric stuff. Um, I'll have a lot of Paxton, and I won't have any hitting really in this game. Uh, Mariners are just too expensive for me to really want to focus on them from a bats perspective. Are you looking at any bats here? Nelson Cruz. Uh, Nel- I Nelson guess. Cruz. You got Nelson Cruz <laughs> and Mitch Haniger. Uh even Gene Segura for forty four hundred. But they're batting two four six, or at least they're expected to. Yeah. Uh, if they're bunched up together, I would consider that as a mini stack. I'm not super familiar with Brad Anderson. It looks like he does have good strikeout stuff, at least from his recent minor league starts. He used to be um, good. Yeah, so maybe he's just sort of having a resurgence, but like, just look at the game logs. Four innings, eight strikeouts. Five innings, eight strikeouts. Six innings, five strikeouts. Um, very few runs allowed. So this is going to be a guy I'll dig into as the day goes on. But uh, that run total is telling me maybe to just avoid Brett Anderson. Um, and then I don't like guys going up against Cruz and Mitch Haniger, who's just been clubbing everything. So I do like some Mariners bats. Not in love with the stack just yet, um, but I wish I could target some Oakland bats if we're going to see a super chalky Paxton, but he seems like the perfect pitcher against this super powerful A's lineup against lefties. Yeah, I wouldn't know who to grab. Like, I guess Chris Davis, Chapman, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I yeah. find the A's lineup to be so underwhelming. Yeah, I mean, so I would go with Lowry and or Chapman if I had to choose but um, and then Chris Davis of course like he's Chris Davis always a threat to hit a home run but if this was a power pitcher like Robbie Ray and he was priced like this where like when he gets hit he gets hit pretty hard then I would be looking at an ace stack just to leverage the field that way and hope um, you get that unlikely outcome that the stud pitcher blows up but Paxton just doesn't allow enough hard contact for me. So, I mean, it's just frustrating that he's priced this way. I hear you. A's do have uh, the fifth highest BABIP uh, versus lefties this year. So there's a little bit of, uh, like, positive luck going against lefties. So I'm, I'm hoping that starts to normalize a little bit here with my overwhelming love for James Paxton. Yeah. That's that's fair. I mean, I don't know. They what's their like line drive percentage and stuff? That's something I would look at because that could increase their bad if, if they're just squaring the ball up. They should have good bad. It's true. Uh, line drive percentage versus lefties. A's are ooh twenty six. You, you see twenty six. I'm seeing twenty six. Do you have nineteen point one percent? I have 19.3%. Okay. Either one of those would have been 22 for me. I guess I could just drag this over here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've got 
Not on hitting, am I? Yep, I'm on hitting. Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, 20, you're probably right. 20 second. You're probably right, yep. I'm not updated. So, that's lower than I would expect for that Babbitt. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so pitchers in my first crunch for DK. Strasburg, 43. DeGrom, 40. Severino, 40. Paxton, 33. Nola, 19. Heaney, 16. Godly, 7. Oh, man. no, Not enough Godly. So if it's Godly, would you prefer DeGrom, Paxton, or one lineup of Severino? <laughs> Uh, just try try the Paxton. Let's see. That might be a chalky pairing. So it's Mariners and Diamondbacks. It, it's, you're bringing along uh, both pitchers and hitters for this one. So, you know, I don't mind that, actually. Getting the Seattle mm-hmm. stack and then Goldschmidt, Owings, Pollock with Bryce Harper as a one-off. Yeah. Or Brewers, Diamondbacks. Yeah, I don't mind either of those really. No. I'm not crazy about Chris Owings, but if he if he fits and you can get a full Brewer stack in there, and Castillo is prone to blowing up, then might be sitting in a good spot. Yeah, if I'm gonna go he, three, four, five on the Diamondbacks, I'll, I'll happily take Owings as part of that. And then if the fourth guy that I have in here is Bryce Harper, well, that's okay <laughs> with me. Can you try um, the two top guys, Degrom and Strasburg? I just want to see if it's yeah. If it's possible, that might be a place people go. Well, there's eight of them here so far. So, Strasburg to Grom with a Reds Mets That's, stack. Okay. Or uh, Mets Nats works. So it looks like the Mets or the Reds are the way to get to. Yeah. Strasburg and Degrom. Um, yeah. That is certainly a way. A lot of people will go. Um. So I just wanted to see what were the stacks to get both of those guys in there just to like, so Reds and Mets, I'm sure are going to be popular because yeah. people are going to play around with lineups and especially the MME guys will have Reds, Mets stacks and Reds Brewers and Reds Nats and Reds, Mets Reds Nats. Nats looks really good. Yeah. And that yeah, so it can be done. In Strasburg. I would probably be looking... Strasburg and Paxton. So let me. There's going to be a ton of options of that, just because I yeah. I know my data. Yeah, twelve lines that are in there right now. Brewers, Nats are going to be the the prevailing favorites of everything here. So that's probably going to be where I'm looking on Fanduel. It's a lot of Strasburg, then uh, Nolan, Degrom, basically uh, similar. Then a little bit of Paxton, Severino, and Heaney. Um, Strasburg will be my guy in more than anything. So we'll be looking at a lot of Strasburg plus Nats and Reds stacks. So go Nats, go Reds. Those are the two teams I wrote up on uh, my Spotlight Stacks article. So if you're ever curious how I end up on uh, particular stacks, I run the lineups on my projections and give you guys exactly who's coming out. So. You can't ever tell me that I'm not giving you guys exactly what I'm telling you. Plus, you watch me do it from 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock, <laughs> three days a week. So yeah. I, I'm, I, I couldn't lie to you any less than I, than I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to me about hockey tonight. Yeah, another two-game slate. Um, we've got Vegas and San Jose and then uh, Boston and Tampa Bay. Should be two good games. Um, we are really familiar with all the teams at this point. If you've been playing playoff DFS, um, so I'll have the two articles out at their normal time around three Eastern, and then Oswald will have his rankings. Um, I'll probably be in the live stream chat, just watching and interacting. So if you guys have questions, you can hit me up in there. I'll try to respond. Um, or if you want a, any more like analysis on MLB, I'm sure I'll have some stronger takes by the time we get closer to lock. So just tag me in there. Or, uh, I'll try to answer. There you go. Uh, only one NBA game tonight. <clears throat> uh, game two of Jazz and Rockets. So I don't have a ton to talk about for basketball, except for the fact that, uh, as we've mentioned before, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we've got another Playline contest. Go to awesomeo.com slash r slash... Oh, God, I already, I already whiffed on this. Go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo. You can sign up uh, through that link, get a free $5, and get into the awesomeo.com $1,000 perfect line bonus. 5000 guaranteed tournament, 2 k to first. Uh, there's been some overlay in the past, so uh, it's a really interesting tournament to get into with a chance to win 2000 Um if you take it down, you'll take on myself and the rest of the staff, including Osimo, uh, in this tournament. So if you want some bragging rights, uh, go ahead and get into that. But try to use that link. Again, it's playline.com slash r slash Osimo. Uh, and you'll see it's this tournament here. You'll be picking the points, rebounds, and assists for James Harden, Anthony Davis, and Kevin Durant. Uh, this tournament goes off on Friday night. Um, so you've still got some time to get into it. And we'll be plugging it. Every day in every show that we do until Friday. <laughs> yeah. That's... I'm filling on my lineup right now, so. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> just just so I remembered it, to enter it in. I don't, I'm don't. i not an NBA guy, so I need to make sure I'm in there. Um, so second place is still available for you guys. Um, <laughs> so I'll see you at the top of the leaderboard. What better way to end this show? Thanks, everybody. Uh, like and subscribe to the video. Follow us on Twitter, at Jake Hari, at Josh Engelman, at Awesomeo underscore com. And uh, I will talk to you again tonight face-to-face in the live stream. Jake will talk to you with his fingers in the chat. Yes. <laughs> That's the best I can do. That's my sign-off. Adios, yes. everybody. Good luck tonight. <laughs>